Good afternoon. We are in the historic Turner Hall interviewing the candidates for Milwaukee's next mayor. It's a great venue to have a great conversation about who will be the next mayor of Milwaukee. And we want to welcome Michael Sampson. Uh, thank you for making time. You're a guy who's not a politician here. So let's start with a question. Um, the first 100 days in office, if you are elected mayor, how do you shake up the city? Uh, number one, I think uh, you got to go after these Kia boys. They're they're running the, the city crazy right now. Someone's got to take them down. I, it's a gang. We gotta we gotta do better from a police department standpoint and and disrupt this gang because they're reckless driving. They're causing a lot of issues on the north side, and we gotta clean that up day one. So day one, take down the Kia boys. So really, you do you, you think it's organized? Do you really think it's that organized? It's organized. I mean, they're they got they got the websites and the reddits and uh, they got clothing apparently. So it's you know. The community knows what they're doing and they know where they are. It's just putting the, the police department uh, in. All right, so you have that conversation. You call in Chief Norman. What do you tell him? What's the big ask? How are you going to hold him accountable and the department to deal with that? I mean, you look online, you know where they hang out. It's by Butterfly Park and, you know, what cars they're going after and just a, a central, you know, organized crime efforts, you know, to go up to that north side and the area where those people are living and, you know, those boys and, we got to be hard on them and we got to, you know, be ready to punish them. Otherwise, we're never going to move forward as the city and people aren't going to feel safe coming down here. What are your other top priorities when it comes to public safety? Uh, public safety wise, I mean, right now, COVID, obviously, we need to plan and prepare for the next wave of the pandemic that's going to come. Because as we know what viruses do, there, it's, it's going to happen again. Omicron's not the end of it. So there's another wave coming. Uh, we're poorly prepared for Omicron. Uh, I mean, we've had a, a pandemic plan since 2007 with the city that we didn't use that describes every step of the way. Uh, so we have to be more prepared with ordering masks now, setting up the next testing site, maybe American Family Field again, uh, and really being ready. When you talk about accountability on the COVID plan, who then do you hold responsible? Uh, for this last thing, I, I hold uh, the chair, Marina, responsible for you know, how she acted. We should have put... Uh, we knew Omicron was coming. It happened in South uh, Africa. We knew it was going to make its way here. December 14th, there was a common council meeting. So we should have put this mask ordinance in place December 14th, not what we voted on today. So, but you're a business guy. When you talk to other businesses, I mean, do they want this kind of regulation? How do they navigate with restrictions? Uh, I mean, small business has been crushed over the last couple of years. And, you know, they're willing to comply and work with the city on these things. They just don't want to be the victims. Last time we saw, you know, bars and restaurants being the victims and getting the citations and the fines for these, you know, for the pandemic. We should have placed more responsibility on individuals. I went to Puerto Rico last year. You had to have a mask on. I was afraid that if I took my mask off, I was going to get a fine from the police department. And that's how it should have been here. But we can't go back now. We got to move forward and be ready for the next steps. I want to circle back to public safety in terms of police because you said some ideas, but when you look at the current level of sworn officers for the city, is that enough or would you add more police? And if you do, knowing your obligations to the pension, how do you afford more police? Where do you get that money? Uh, I think we need to stay at the level that we're at. I don't know about more officers. I think better utilizing the officers that we have. We, we can't bog them down with paperwork and, and the little things. So we have the Office of Violence Prevention, you know, and another little plan I got here is the Milwaukee Blueprint for Peace. This was put together, never adopted. We don't need new plans. We've spent money putting plans together in the past and then never implementing them. So we just need to put these plans in place take some responsibility off the police department in terms of the smaller crimes like the sexual assaults and the reckless driving and you know some of that stuff from a more community standpoint level. So do you think that the Office of Violence Prevention needs a more elevated um, platform or uh, priority when working with police? And would you as mayor um, try to work on bettering that relationship? Because it seems like they're working in two different silos, but yet sometimes many people say the two need to work together. Yeah. 
Uh, they, obviously, they absolutely need to work together. And I think the Office of Violence Prevention right now is downtown. I would love to see that office moved up to the north side where the majority of our problems are in the city so they're closer to what's going on, so they can react faster. A lot of times police, fire, even Office of Violence Prevention is all about reaction times and getting to people fast. So let's put those offices and buildings closer to would you really need help. Would you make it a cabinet level position? For Office of Violence, and I think we need some kind of level within City Hall. Maybe it's instead of having it be a department, maybe it is a cabinet well, position. An office under uh, the, uh, the Department of Health is where I mean, it's at now. I don't think we're at a, a level from a city standpoint to be creating more uh, salaries within the city of Milwaukee. I, we need to cut, you know, because we do have a budget crisis coming up. So where do you see cuts coming if you're elected mayor? Like I said, Milwaukee is a business. We have to look at it that way, and we have to really break down the departments that we have and where our money is going. Just because you've got money last year under the budget doesn't mean you're going to get money again in the upcoming year. We really have to look hard at where we're spending our money and maybe cut some of those dollar amounts. Well, as a, as a, business, as a business owner and understanding budgets, yeah. let, let's talk about some of the problems that Milwaukee has. In the zip code of 53208, the median income is $33,000. That is not a living wage. 26% of the people who live in that, that district or in that zip code live below the poverty line. As mayor, how would you create jobs and or job training to address a distressed zip code like 53208 to see a thriving Milwaukee? I'm, I'm in a position and I am, uh, you know, I have a fiance and I got a dog, but I don't have kids. So I have time to go out and do things. I have time to go to DC. I have time to go and approach companies that aren't in Milwaukee right now that maybe we can bring them here. We need more jobs and especially on the north side of Milwaukee. Uh, Milwaukee got hit crushed with the manufacturing that left over the years. So we have to replace those jobs uh, on the north side of Milwaukee, especially so for companies like Masterlock. We need more Masterlocks up there. So you talk about the need, and people would agree we need to do this, but they're going to look to you and say, how are you going to do it? Partnerships is one way, uh, developing relationships. But is there a tool that you think is missing in the toolkit that you will bring to the table that would say to some company that's currently here, expand, or bring in a new business? And do you see that as something to build up downtown Milwaukee or to get out into the neighborhoods? I mean. Downtown Milwaukee is doing just fine. I'm, it's going to continue doing just fine. We have to put our focus on the north side of Milwaukee. If we can't fix the north side of Milwaukee, we're never going to fix this city. We're going to keep declining. We're going to keep losing population. So we have to, being a business guy, I have to go out there and go after, you know, Milwaukee Tool coming downtown is great, but those jobs aren't manufacturing, you know, or service jobs that the north side of Milwaukee needs. One of the issues the north side um, has is transportation, right? So even in bringing a company to a neighborhood, most people don't work in their neighborhoods. I don't work where I live. However, you do have neighboring cities, counties, Kenosha, Racine, that have all of these, these jobs in manufacturing, but we have the workforce here. Have you ever thought about or developing partnerships with outside communities to get the workforce here to work there to hopefully bring back revenue in the city. Yeah, I mean, we have to connect and we have to work more with our neighbors. I've had some meetings with some mayors in other cities around us and just about working together. And, and transportation is a, a huge issue. I mean, we have the rapid bus line coming, which will hopefully help, but the jobs right now that you know, the north side of, and most people in Milwaukee are looking for are down south. They're Amazon or, you know, hopefully more Foxconn jobs come up. But we have to get some of those to come to Century City because those are the jobs that were lost. And we need easier access, you know, to those jobs in that area. We don't have an A.O. Smith anymore, though, in Milwaukee, right, that, that attracts people. So as Charles was saying, how do you marry the workforce you have with the job seek, you know, job creation here? I mean, what's tough is that we lost a workforce in our, in our baby boomers. There's a huge, you know, they're retired. If they didn't survive COVID because, you know, they were in their job and, you know, there's not a survival COVID rate, but actual losing their jobs or, or just deciding they want to retire. That's a huge population gone. 
And where are, we've lost manufacturing jobs and we've gained tech jobs. We don't have tech jobs in Milwaukee. I mean, Foxconn is an example of that. Those are manufactured jobs, but those are being done in China and not here. So we need to find stuff that is made, you know, can be made in Milwaukee or develop another, you know, more jobs that are available for more people. So in part of that is to create a workforce that can fill these jobs. And one way to do that is through education. Where would you make a difference knowing you don't have a vote at MPS, can't change the curriculum at MPS? What do you do to try to get a better workforce in Milwaukee through either public schools, charter schools, or the choice schools? Uh, I mean, all of our schools need improvement. And one thing that I didn't have growing up in schools that all of us, pro probably you guys as well, uh, that we weren't taught about money. We weren't talked, taught about credit cards or checking accounts, and we weren't set up for the future uh, success by knowing those things. And nothing about entrepreneurship. I mean, I started as an entrepreneur. Uh, luckily, I got a loan from my sister to help me out, but a lot of people don't have opportunities like that, uh, especially in different communities in Milwaukee. So we have to do a better job at teaching financial stuff to kids in schools and also teach about entrepreneurship. You don't have to go to college. You, don't, you can have your side hustles of selling sports cards or sneakers or something that you're excited about and, or get into the trades. Plenty of jobs right now in electrical, plumbing. Like those are the needs that need to be filled. So how would you lead that effort as a mayor? You have to put pressure on the MPS school district to do better. A lot of people have tried to do that. <laughs> like I said, we just, you just got to keep Try trying, right? Uh -huh. That's, that's all you can do. Quality of life is a, is a big issue here for any uh, candidate. Uh, home ownership is also important because home ownership creates revenue for the city. However, center city of Milwaukee is mostly renters. What initiatives would you implement that would create more home ownership um, and financial literacy that would help people keep their homes so that we don't see a repeat of 2008 where we had people losing their homes and now we have blighted blocks as well as we also have empty lots because people couldn't afford their homes and they went to blight. Yeah, I mean, this, the systematic uh, you know, problems that Milwaukee has and the segregation that has made the north side what they are today are, are deep issues going you know, back to the 40s, 50s, and it's continued today. I would like to see, uh, I had a meeting last night with the Milwaukee, uh, actually the Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce, and we discussed some of the housing stuff. Uh, I think you have to look out to programs like Habitat Humanity. I think there's a stat out there that in Milwaukee, they're building, I think, 25 houses a year in Milwaukee. There's another six Habitat Humanities in the rest of the state that all combined are making like 12. So if we can put more of the Habitat Humanity, you know, in the Milwaukee area to to find and fi fix the houses that are currently here, that's gonna go a long ways for that community. The number is stunning when you look at who could use affordable housing and the pace of building these homes from Habitat for Humanity. Uh, they're, the, they're in that space trying to make a difference. But you've listed a lot of things so far that cost money. Mm -hmm. The city is limited in how it gets money. Are you for a sales tax? How do you convince the governor or the speaker of the house to give you more shared revenue? Where are you in that space? I mean, everyone needs more money. Um, we're so not in sales tax. I would love a, a sales tax. I think if we're, we're trying to compare Milwaukee to other cities like Nashville and cities that we want to become, like in Austin or in Nashville, we need to raise the sales tax. Am I looking at it? I think right now we're not going to convince our state assembly to do that. So I'm not going in expecting a sales tax to become a thing. We have to figure out a way to work within our budget and start cutting things to get to the right levels without banking on a sales tax happening because I don't think it will. I just want to double back on cutting things because people are going to say, well, what's he going to cut? I mean, you look at city services right now, you look at Department of Public Works, you're, you're looking at a pace right now over the next 70 years they hope to get to all the lead laterals. So what people might be saying, what does he want to cut? Uh, I mean, if you you got to break down the budget. You got to look at each department individually and find out. They're going to want to know that before they put you in office. Yeah, <laughs> I, I agree. You know, like I said, it's a business. We, we have to look at departments, and there's there's stuff that goes into our budget every single year. You know, we've talked about the Office of Violence Prevention. They're doing great work. They're budgeted an amount every year. Are they doing the most with that money, and are they using that money correctly, or can they you know afford to take a little bit off the you know the bottom to go back into our budget that we can, you know, keep in our 
keep in the bank for our pension problem. And you know, circling back to where we started in the beginning, you, you don't hold a political office, you have not held a political office. Why now and why should people vote for you? I have not, you know, I look at myself, I have not been part of the problem in Milwaukee. We're at, we're at a bad time right now, and I have not been part of that, but I want to be part of the solution. I want to stay in Milwaukee. A lot of my friends have already moved out of Milwaukee because of schools, because of violence, because, you know, gun violence, reckless driving. They're sick of the crime in Milwaukee, so they left. They're in Brookfield, they're in Mequon. We can't lose talent in Milwaukee like that any longer. So I'm committed to staying here, and I'm committed to fighting, whether I become mayor, I'm still going to stay and fight here, you know, regardless. Michael Sampson, we appreciate you making time for us. Good luck.